litigation management to avoid repetitive appeals by the department. It has been observed that a lot of time and resources are consumed in filing of appeals which involve identical issues. Taking forward our policy of sound litigation management, I propose to provide that if a question of law in the case of an SSE is identical to a question of law which is pending in the appeal before a jurisdictional high court or supreme court in any case, the filing of further appeal in the case of this SSE by the department shall be deferred till such a question of law is decided by the jurisdictional high court or the supreme court. This will greatly help in reducing the repeated litigation between taxpayer and the department. Taking forward our efforts to further promote the IFSC, I hereby propose to provide that income of a non-resident from offshore derivative instruments or over-the-counter derivatives issued by an offshore banking unit, income from royalty and interest on account of lease of ship and income received from portfolio management services in IFSC shall be exempt from tax subject to specified conditions. Rationalization of surcharge. In the globalized business world, there are several works, work contracts whose terms and conditions mandatorily require formation of a consortium. The members in the consortium are generally companies. In such cases, the income of these AOPs has to suffer a graded surcharge up to 37%, which is a lot more than surcharge on the individual companies. Accordingly, I propose to cap the surcharge of these AOPs at 15%, 1.5%. Further, the long-term capital gains on listed equity shares, units, etc., are liable to maximum surcharge of 15%, while other long-term capital gains are subjected to a graded surcharge, which goes up to 37%. I propose to cap the surcharge on long-term capital gains arising on transfer of any type of assets at 15, 1.5%. This step will give a boost to startup community, and along with my proposal on the extended tax benefits to manufacturing companies, and startups uh, reaffirms our commitment to Atmanirbhar Bharat. Clarification in relation to health and education sets as business expenditure. The income tax is not an allowable expenditure for computation of business income. This includes tax as well as surcharges. The health and education sets is imposed as an additional sur surcharge on the taxpayer for funding specific government welfare programs. However, some courts have allowed health and education sets as business expenditure, which is against the legislative intent. To reiterate the legislative intent, I propose to clarify that any surcharge or sets on income and profits is not allowable as business expenditure. Deterrence against tax evasion. Honorable Speaker, sir, presently there is ambiguity regarding set-off of brought forward loss against undisclosed income detected in search operations. It has been observed that in many cases where undisclosed income or suppression of sales, etc., is detected. Payment of tax is avoided by setting off of losses. In order to bring certainty and to increase deterrence among tax evaders, I propose to provide that no set-off of any loss shall be allowed against undisclosed income detected during search and survey operations. It has been noticed that as a business promotion strategy, there is a tendency on businesses to pass on benefits to their agents. Such benefits are taxable in the hands of the agents. In order to track such transactions, I propose to provide for tax deduction by the person giving benefits if the aggregate value of such benefits exceeds 20,000 uh, 
rupees during the financial year. A few other changes are being made, the details of which are there in the finance bill. Indirect taxes. 